let's figure out what our balance sheet looks like. Now the opening cash on the balance sheet is going to be equal to the amount of cash that Fred's trying to raise for his company. And he's assuming at the moment that he's going to be able to raise a seed round of $5 million. So that, if he's successful in raising his money, is what his opening balance is going to be for cash. Now recall that the opening balance is actually technically the closing balance of the prior year. So before he launches into his first year, at the end of his, his, his zeroth year, the beginning of his first year, which is one day apart, um, he will have $5 million to play with and make sure that uh, his company uh, is successful in, in meeting their objectives. Now, uh, he'll have no accounts receivable on his first, at the end of his first, uh, his, at the end of his zeroth year, or the beginning of his first year. He'll have no inventory. His current assets will be, of course, the sum of all of his other assets. Let's just do that while we're here. Net fixed assets will be zero. He has yet to buy them. And his total assets will be the sum of current assets and net fixed assets. So that's a pretty good simplified representation of what he's going to be looking at in the way of assets in the first year. The accounts payable, he'll have no accounts payable. His current liabilities will be equal only to his accounts payable, which will be non-existent. And yes, it is true that that is an extra line here. You could call his current liabilities accounts payable or his accounts payable current liabilities are the same thing, but let's just go with the setup that's been provided here. His deferred tax liability at the beginning of his first year will be zero. His debt will be zero in this and probably all future years. And his equity will be um, a combination of paid in, well, it'll be paid in capital right now. And who owns that equity will be not shown on this uh, balance sheet analysis. That will be the subject of his operating agreement if he's an LLC or his articles of incorporation if he's the, and who owns his equity, who owns the stock to his company uh, if he's a C corporation, which is um, what's actually anticipated in the case. So his current liabilities plus all those items below it on his liabilities and equities sheet is what will constitute his uh, total liabilities and equity. And miraculously and mercifully, uh, and not too surprisingly, in his beginning or his opening balance sheet, he's got a, ba a balance sheet that opens. And with any luck, that will be true for all five years going forward. Let's turn to the construction in the first year of his uh, accounts receivable. Now, accounts receivable are equal, are, are, are um, related to his revenues. Um, he's going to he's anticipating six and a half million dollars worth of revenues uh, but uh, his customers are not going to be paying him currently the moment that he sells his uh, his product to him he's going to have some period of time uh, during which uh, he's going to have to wait for his sales to be collected and that's what accounts receivable are as you I'm sure recall from your accounting courses uh, in this case, uh, we're assuming that he's going to have 60 days worth of accountables or accounts receivable, which means that his customers are going to put off paying him for two months. And uh, that is not a good thing for his business. He's going to have to figure out how to finance that. And the reason we have this model is to uh, figure out how much he's going to have to finance. Um, I'm going to adopt, uh, I I'm going to stay consistent with my prior assumption of a 360 day year. Um, and, uh, and and use that for my forecasting model. Uh, it is perfectly valid to use a 365-day year. There's a difference of about $20,000 in the accounts receivable he's got to have. Uh, I'm going with 360 uh, for the sake of consistency. Uh, either would be a, a, a perfectly acceptable answer. And uh, inventory uh, is um, run off of his uh, cost of sales. Recall here that Fred is going to buy his uh, miraculous technology, whatever it is, from an outsider who is um, producing it to his specifications. So he's going to have to um, buy that from his uh, supplier and hold a certain amount of it uh, in inventory uh, prior to his customers buying it. Um, and in this case, we're assuming that he's going to have to hold, he's going to have six turns a year, 
of inventory, which means you're going to be holding about two months worth of inventory uh, uh, in order to support his sales. So current assets we actually already have calculated, so I'm going to take that sum and move it forward. And then net fixed assets is uh, not a difficult uh, calculation. It is obviously your prior balance of fixed assets plus everything that you buy that goes into fixed assets minus your depreciation. And we have assumptions for both of those. So here's your capital expenditures every year. I'm going to make that an absolute cell reference. Then I'm going to subtract out uh, the amount of depreciation that is implicit for those assets every year. Uh, and that gives me a net fixed asset number. Um, I should hasten to say that um, the capital expenditures required every year and the depreciation on those capital expenditures every year could be entire sep uh, spreadsheets to themselves. Uh, for the sake of this uh, forecast, we're simply uh, going to take a single number and run it forward every year uh, and not worry about the complexity of the various forms of uh, depreciation calculations and different ways of viewing how much he's going to need in neck fix assets. He's just going to supply, he's just going to assume that he needs to have about $500,000 a year spent on net fixed assets in order to support his operation, probably primarily in warehousing since he's outsourcing most of his manufacturing. Uh, to be consistent, I'm going to make this a single digit. And we have uh, completed a projection of his balance sheet for the first year. Uh, without having calculated cash yet. We're going to calculate cash after we go through the cash flow statement because our cash flow statement will uh, arise or, or will produce a number that is the increase in the cash account and we have not calculated that yet. So we're just going to live with an incomplete statement of what our assets are and at the magical moment we'll see if we can make our balance sheet balance by bringing that forward and by bringing that calculation into our uh, into our balance sheet. Accounts payable um, are run off of, again, by convention cost of sales. And you can think conceptually about how this is um, the delay that he's going to have in paying his own supplier. So he gets a certain amount of financing. He, he incurs a liability. He owes his supplier money, but uh, in essence, it's interest-free financing that he gets by delaying uh, payment for a certain period of time. In this case, our assumption is that he's, his accounts payable days on average are going to be 45 days. I'm going to make that an absolute cell reference with Command T. And then I'm going to adopt the 360-day convention, which I adopted for accounts receivable and for the payback calculation earlier. That gives us our accounts payable figure. Uh, and you can see here that the supplier isn't too badly off because he's going to buy $300,000 worth of inventory every, in his first year uh, before he can sell it, but he's also going to uh, finance it by asking his financer to participate in, uh, to, to lend him free money, 45 days worth of money, for 200, uh, to the extent of $200,000. Uh, where he really uh, gets hurt is his own customers are going to require them Require him to finance them for uh, for 60 days, uh, which amounts uh, with his current sales forecast to about 1.1 million a year. So, financing working capital is a significant issue uh, in any business. is a certainly an issue in a startup business, and Fred wants to make sure that he's captured that uh, that phenomenon in his balance sheet and his cash flow statement. Current liability is simply a sum, so I'm going to move that forward. Deferred tax liability we actually is simply going to be the um, the summation uh, or, or the accumulation of the deferred tax expense that is already calculated for us up here under the deferred tax expense calculation. So I'm going to add that in. And you may ask yourself, oops, do I have a... a um, a sign problem here. Have I correctly included that? And the answer is yes, that is the correct way to, to include it. If you need a, sort of a, an intuitive understanding of it, what's going on here is that he has a contra liability or essentially an asset, which is the 
net operating loss that he has uh, that will generate a tax shield for him in future years. Uh, so that is uh, shown here as a negative liability, which is mathematically the equivalent of an asset. Uh, debt, he's going to have zero debt this or any other year until such time as we might decide to borrow money in the future. It may be an option, but it's not going to be an option for an early stage business. Uh, so for the moment, I'm just going to make it zero, and we can choose to play with that assumption later if we want to. Now, equity is, um, we're just going to accumulate all the equity accounts here. We're going to say that equity is equal to prior year's equity plus net income. So in net income will increase the amount of the equity account. There it is. Uh, and what decreases the equity account is dividends. We haven't yet calculated that, but we're going to assume that that is a negative number. And if it's a negative number, we're going to add the negative number as a uh, to achieve a decrease in in net in equity whenever dividends are paid and there's another source of uh, of uh, equity and that is if equity financing is raised so uh, those are the four items that go into uh, equity into the equity account uh, in this simplified model and we finish it off by copying uh, the total liability sum and equity sum and pasting it forward. Now you can see here our first problem, which is that assets do not equal liabilities and equity. And with any luck, the amount of cash will, will reconcile those two and make them uh, equivalent not only in this year, but in all future years. So let's take our logic, assuming that it's correct. Uh, do shift arrow, 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 arrow and then Command V, which is Paste, to populate our balance sheet. And we recognize at the moment that we have an incomplete balance sheet, and we are hoping against hope that the cash account will balance that once we figure out what cash is going to be in every future year. Now, working capital, in this case, looks only looks at the non-cash working capital accounts. We've already discussed them, so uh, let's just look at the uh, at the items that feed this. Uh, Accounts receivable and inventory are the things that he's going to have to supply cash for. Accounts payable is what he sort of gets cash for from his uh, from his supplier. He gets essentially an interest-free loan. And so uh, the working capital uh, amount or calculation uh, excluding cash uh, is calculated for us here. Calculated for us here, and we will see in a moment why that is so helpful.